Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one new husky. Gold, gold is covered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Tasting. One, two, three. Tasting. Tasting is the test. Pour out a heaping bowl full of delicious, crisp, Quaker-popped wheat or Quaker-popped rice. Top it with milk or cream and fruit. Mmm, mmm, your mouth waters at the sight. Then take a big spoonful. And, ah, what a taste delight. Those crisp, king-size kernels of Quaker-popped wheat or rice are so deliciously tender, so nut-like in flavor, you want more and more. Taste them tomorrow morning for sure. Crisp, fresh, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice. Shot from guns. Sergeant Preston had many acquaintances among the miners who had staked out claims in the Yukon Territory. And one of his oldest and best friends was an elderly sourdough named Zack Porter, who owned a small mine near Whitehorse. Late one afternoon, the sergeant stopped off at Zack's cabin. Looking As he halted his team, Zack's pretty young daughter, Daphne, came out to greet him. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Daphne. Gee, <laughs> old fella, goodness, but it's nice to see you two again. How's your father these days? He's terribly worried. Oh, well, what about? Well, he's in debt. He's afraid he's going to lose the mine. I'm sorry to hear that. Sergeant, won't you stay for supper and try to cheer him up? Well, uh, all right, Daphne. Oh, I'm so glad. Come on inside. Later at dinner, remembering what Daphne had said, Sergeant Preston kept the conversation going along cheerful lines throughout the meal. It wasn't until later, when he and Zack had pulled up their chairs around the fireplace, that he ventured to speak about the mine. Daphne says you're worried about losing the mine, Zack. Yeah, that's a fact, Sergeant. I'm gosh awful worried. Is there anything I can do? I wish there were, but I'm afraid not. Looks like the bank is going to foreclose on me in a couple of days. Well, won't they grant an extension? I don't know, and I don't aim to find out. But Ebenezer Finley's manager of the bank now. Hmm. You and here are old pals. You used to be partners in the old days before the Klondike rush. Yeah, that's just it. We used to be partners till we had that falling out two years ago. I haven't spoken to Ed Finley since. And I sure don't aim to go crawling on my knees to him now, asking any favors. Oh, Dad, that's silly, and you know it. Just because the two of you got on each other's nerves and had an argument... Now, no... now, Daphne, you hush up. I, I don't even want to talk about the ordinary old cuss. And while I think of it, I don't like the idea of you and that nephew of his seeing so much of each other. Dad, Ray has nothing to do with that argument between you and his uncle. Uh, how soon do you think you could pay off the loan if the bank did grant an extension? Oh, I could pay it off in four or five months, right after the spring cleanup. But I don't aim to ask for an extension, so there's no use talking about it. Well, Zach, you're just being stubborn. Of course he's being stubborn, Sergeant. That's what I've been telling him all along. Now, now, Daphne, I told you to hush up. Well, Zach, just what do you intend to do if you don't ask for more time to pay back that loan? Well, the bank will foreclose on me and take over the mine. That's what'll happen. I'll be in a mighty awkward fix. No two ways about it. Don't you think you owe it to Daphne to do everything in your power to keep that from happening? Well, hang it all, Sergeant. I... Oh, shucks, I don't know what to do. You and Finley never had any differences back in the old days. You went through a lot together before you struck it, Rich. Yeah, I reckon that's true. The whole doggone territory was a wilderness in those days. 
We were among the first sourdoughs up here. I'd left Daphne and her ma back in the States. Eb and I prospected together, bucked the trail together, and by thunder, plenty of times we've starved together, too. Eb hasn't forgotten that any more than you have. You can swallow your pride and bring yourself to ask for that extension. He may jump at the chance to make things up with you. Yes. Why don't you do it, Dad? Oh, Dad read it all. I just don't like the idea of... of uh... Oh, well, all right. For your sake, Daphne, I'll do it. The following day, Zack went to call on Ebenezer Finley at the bank in Whitehorse. When Zack walked into his office, he was smoking a large cigar and studying a financial report through gold-rimmed eyeglasses. He glanced up at Zack haughtily. Just have a chair, my good man. I, well, what's that? I said have a chair. I'll be with you in a moment. <laughs> now then... Let me see. Your name is... You um... know blame well what my name is, Eb Finley. Oh, yes. You're old Zack Porter. Of course. you uh, Old Zack Porter? By thunder, Time to keep you... your voice down and state your business you... promptly. I presume you've come to pay back that loan. Well, you presume wrong. I haven't come to pay it back. It's due next week, you know. Certainly, I know. What do you suppose I came here to see you about? That's what I'm trying to find out. Eb, you're going out of your way to make this hard for me. Pulling all this high hat stuff. I assure you, I haven't got the vaguest idea what you're talking about. Well, the fact is, I'm not in a position to pay back that loan just now. Well, uh, what do you expect me to do about it? Like a dad-ratted fool, I came here hoping you'd grant me an extension. An extension? That's what I said. But I can see right now the whole... I'm sorry, Porter, but I'm afraid I can't risk the bank's money any further on a man of your character. Why, you... Either pay back the loan on time or... We'll have to foreclose and take over your mouth. Oh, I've taken enough of your guff, Eb Finley. And here, get that cigar out of your mouth. Uh, right now, now, see you here, tight-fisted you... tight-fisted old skinflint. If you weren't wearing glasses, I'd make you eat every word you've spoken to me since I came into this office. Uh, don't threaten me, Porter, or I'll have you thrown out of here bodily. Oh, I should have known better than to come in here in the first place. You can't change a leopard spots. And by thunder, you can't change a polecat smell. Why, you... You confounded old buzzard, get out of my office. Don't worry, the sooner I get out of here, the better I'll like it. I need a change of air. As Zack opened the door to leave, he oh, collided uh, with Ebb's uh, nephew, uh, young Ray Finley, who was just entering the office. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, Mr. Porter. But, oh, oh, so it's you, eh? Yes, sir, and uh, I'm glad I bumped into you this but way. You? I, I mean, I'm glad we met. Well, that's a dang sight more than I can say. I wanted to talk to you. Uh, talk to me? About what? About Daphne. You see, uh, I just proposed to her and she accepted. Well, that's not... She what? She accepted my proposal, so now I wanted to ask you for your consent. Why, you young whippersnapper, if you think I'd ever let Daphne marry anyone by the name of Finley, you've got another thing coming. But, but, sir, Don't I... but me. I not only refuse my consent to the marriage, but from now on I forbid you to see my daughter again. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, if you'll stand out of my way, I'll clear out of this... Skunk's den. Yes, sir. At that same moment, a man in a fur parka with a muffler drawn across the lower half of his face was knocking on the door of a cabin at the outskirts of town. Eh, what do you want? Oh, wait till I pull down this muffler. There. Hell, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's me, all right, Ronco. Let me inside, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, hurry up. How in blazes did you get loose? Thought the constable was taking you to jail up in Dawson City. He was, but I managed to slug him and break away the night before last. Oh, you fool. What'd you come here for? He's probably on your trail right now. Ah, don't worry. I knocked him out and swiped his team. It'll be at least 24 hours before he can hope to get back here to Whitehorse. Yeah? And then what happens? By the time he gets here, I'll be on my way back to the border with a fortune on my sled. A fortune on your sled? That's right. I'm willing to cut you in on the deal. Just wait till I get off this parka and I'll tell you all about it. A few moments later, after Calmore had removed his parka and mucklucks, the two men pulled up chairs around the crude pine plank table. All right. Now let's hear this deal you're talking about. When Ebenezer Findlay had me arrested for embezzling money at the bank, I swore I'd get even with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about it? Well, I figured out a way to get revenge on him and... Rob the bank in the bargain. And just how do you figure on doing all that? Listen, Finley has a key to the bank, and he knows the combination of the vault. So? So we'll go to his house tonight, pull a gun on the old buzzard. 
We'll throw a scare into him and force him to tell us the combination to the vault. Keep talking. As soon as we get the combination, we'll tie him up, take the key, go clean out the bank. Then we'll go back to Finley's house and kill him. That way, I'll have my revenge, and there'll be no witnesses left to connect you with the crime. Hmm. That's a mighty slick scheme, Gilma. There's one thing you've forgotten. Such as what? Finley don't live alone. His nephew lives with him. Or were you planning on killing him, too? Ah, there's no need of that. I know a thing or two about that nephew of Finley's. I've got it all figured out how we can get him out of the way. Now, here's what I've got in mind. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, I was thinking about the swell Halloween party I went to last week. Hey, what goes on here? Who are you? I say, who are you? I am a ghost. A ghost? Oh. Yes, my name's Pete, and I'm tired. Oh, so tired. I thought you looked a bit pale. Well, I've been busy lately on the go. What with Halloween and haunting houses and things. Oh, I'll bet you're tired. I'm hungry, too, real hungry. Haven't even had breakfast yet. What? No breakfast? Never do. Well, no wonder you look so thin. Why, I can hardly even see you. Uh, no offense, man, of course. That's okay. Look, don't you know everyone, even ghosts, ought to eat a good breakfast? Oh. Sure. Never found a breakfast I really like. Well, did you ever try a breakfast of Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice topped with milk or cream and fruit? No. Say, you don't know what you're missing. Swellest breakfast you ever tasted. Good for you, too. Man, oh man, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are crisp, tender, king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Mercy. Guns, did you say? Yup. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. Mm, that's a terrific idea. Why don't you try them? I'm going to. <laughs> well, sir, fellas and girls, at least Pete the Ghost is on the right track. And don't you forget to stow away those delicious, nourishing breakfasts of Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Ask Mom to keep a good supply of both delicious kinds on hand at all times. You'll go for rice or wheat shot from guns. That's the original, the one and only... Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from gun. Now to continue. Following the unpleasant scene that had taken place at the bank, Ray Finley went to Sergeant Preston and asked him to intercede between Eb and Zack. And so late that afternoon... The sergeant dropped around to Eb Finley's office at the bank. You have a chair, Sergeant. Thanks, Eb. Now, uh, what can I do for you? Well, about that loan of Zach Porter's, don't you suppose you can see your way clear to granting him the extension? That old reprobate. He'll get no more time for me. Either he pays off the loan when it's due or I'll foreclose. Well, do you mind telling me your reason for taking such an attitude? Because he insulted me, that's why. Well, I know Zach has a quick temper, but let's be honest, Eb... You sure you didn't say something to make him angry? Well, I, I'll admit I patronized him a bit. But that's no reason for him to call me a polecat and a tight-fisted old skinflint. Matter of fact, I was intending all along to grant him the extension. After I'd had some fun with him. I see, and the fun got out of hand. Zack Porter is a low-down, backbiting old scoundrel. I found that out when he and I were partners, and by thunder, I see no reason to change my opinion of him now. You can't convince me of that any more than you can convince yourself. You and Zack went through too many hardships together in the old days. You know perfectly well there's lots of affection between the two of you, but you're both too stubborn to admit it. Now, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If Zack will tender me a full apology for those names he called me, I'll grant him that extension. You're asking a lot of human nature, eh, but... It's worth a try. I'll stop off at the mine this evening and tell Zack to come see you. That evening, Sergeant Preston had to travel a few miles north of town on an official errand. En route, he stopped off to see Zack Porter and Daphne, 
and told them about his visit to Eb Finley. I had a talk with Eb Finley this afternoon. Oh, what did he have to say, Sergeant? Personally, I'm not interested in what the old tightwad had to say. Well, in that case, I won't tell you. But I'll say this much, Zach. If you'll go into town tonight and talk things over with Eb, I have an idea you'll both see things in a different light. Oh, I'll do nothing of the sort. Oh, now, Dad, be reasonable. I tried being reasonable with the old buzzard, and you see where it got me. Just between ourselves, Eb admitted he'd been a bit overbearing, but I think he realizes that was a mistake. Why don't you have one more talk with him? Well, yes, please, Dad. Well, dag nabbit, I... Well, all right, I'll see the old skin flint once more. Somewhat later that evening, at Eb Finley's house in town, Eb and his nephew were seated around the fireplace when they heard a knock at the door. Maybe that's Zach Porter. I'll go see. Ray got up from his chair and walked out to the vestibule, which shielded the rest of the house from blasts of wind that blew in whenever the door was open. It's funny. There's no one here. As he shut the door, Ray suddenly noticed an envelope lying on the floor. Letter. It's addressed to me. Who was it, Ray? I don't know. When I opened the door, there was no one there. Whoever it was apparently slipped this letter under the door. Letter? Well, let's see it. It's for me. Uh. Dear Ray, it's very important that I see you at once. Please meet me right away in front of the warehouse at the steamboat landing. And it's signed Daphne. You no, know, she's probably cooked up some scheme to get Zach Porter's consent to your marriage. If you ask me, you're mighty lucky he won't give his consent. I'm sorry, Uncle Eb, but I don't feel that way. I'm going to the warehouse and find out what this is all about. Putting on his parka, Ray left the house and headed toward the river. The Yukon had long since frozen over, and the steamboat landing was dark and deserted. When he arrived at the warehouse, Daphne was nowhere in sight. It looks like she isn't here yet. Golly, I'd certainly like to know why she wrote me that letter. As Ray paced back and forth in front of the warehouse, a figure suddenly materialized in the shadows and closed in behind him. Don't turn around. Hey, what the... Just get your hands up. Hey, what is this? I said get your hands up. That's better. Now I'll show you what it's all about. No. All right, Bronco. I've knocked him out. The coast is clear. Hey, so far, so good. What'll we do with him? We'll tie him up and gag him. Dump him somewhere out of sight. Then we'll go back to the house and attend to Eb Finley. A short time later, Zach Porter arrived at Eb Finley's house. Eb opened the door in answer to his knock. Oh, it's you, Porter. I reckon you know my face by now. It hasn't improved any, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Come into the front room. I'll tell you right now, it wasn't my idea to come here. Well, it wasn't my idea either. But Sergeant Preston talked me into it. Well, you're here, so you may as well take off your pocket and sit down. Yes. Now, I suppose you want to continue our discussion about that loan. It's not a question of discussing it. Either you'll grant me the extension or you won't. I don't aim to get down on my knees to you. Well, as I told the sergeant, I'll take the matter under advisement. If you'll tender me a full apology. If I'll what? If you'll tender me a full apology for those names you called me this morning. Ed Finley, I'm not tendering you an apology for anything. In that case, there's nothing more to be said. There's a heap more to be said. I'm going to say it right now. I always knew you were a low-down, sneaking, tight-fisted, hammer-headed old reptile. I've taken just about enough from you, you shiftless old reprobate. <laughs> If you don't get your carcass off these premises, I... Now, oh, hold on a minute while I answer the door. Don't worry, I've got plenty more to say before I leave here. Shit, let's... Reach, Finley. Don't try slamming that door. Kelmo. That's right. Back to settle up the score with what? you. I thought the constable was taking you to jail up in Dawson City. That's what the constable thought, too. But he learned different. Now, keep your hands up high. Come on, Ronco. Yeah. The shades had been drawn, and consequently, the crooks didn't suspect that Eb had a visitor sitting in the front room beyond the vestibule. Now, start backing up. But Zack had overheard everything and had grabbed up a footstool to use as a weapon. Eyes. He waited tensely until Kalmar emerged into view. I told you I'd get revenge on you, Finley, and now I am... <laughs> Why, you don't work, Zack! Grab right? his gun, Eb! Why, you... Eb Finley had grabbed Kalmar's gun hand as he reeled under the blow from the footstool. At the same time, Zack struggled with the other crook, whose gun was still in his holster. Help! Police! Help! Eb and Zack fought desperately, but the struggle was too uneven. The crooks were younger and much more active. They finally subdued the two elderly men and covered them with their guns. Now then, Finley, one more yell out of you and I'll blast you into the middle of next week. And the same goes for you, Porter. What are you intending to do? First of all, you're going to hand over the key to the bank. 
Then you're going to tell us a combination to the vault. I'll do no such thing. You'll kick through all right after we've worked you over a bit. You know, Ronco, I'm really going to enjoy making this old buzzard talk. About an hour and a half later, Sergeant Preston arrived back in town. He was driving his team along the riverfront on his way to the police post. As he passed the warehouse at the steamboat landing, King suddenly halted and then veered off into the shadows on one side of the building. Hold on, Husky. Hold on, hold on. What's wrong, fella? Find something? All right, King, I'll come over and have a look. A moment later, as the sergeant's eyes strove to pierce the darkness, he realized what King had discovered. What? A man tied and gagged. Better carry you out into the moonlight, fella, where I can see you better. What? Ray Finley. Wait a second. I'll have this gag off you. Thanks, Sergeant. You all right? Hold on. I'm plenty cold. There must be a lump on the back of my head. I, otherwise, I'm okay. I'll cut these ropes. Tell me what happened. I, I got a message tonight asking me to come down here to the warehouse. It was signed Daphne, but it must have been a trick. When I got here, some fellow shoved a gun in my back and then knocked me over the head. Any idea who he was? No, that's a complete mystery. His voice sounded rather familiar, but I never got a look at his face. There, you're free. Thanks again. What in the dickens do you suppose his game was? Just a practical joke? And so, he has a queer sense of humor. Ray, it looks to me as though someone wanted to get you out of the house tonight and keep you out. Come on, we better go and see if your uncle's all right. Meanwhile, after forcing Ebb to hand over the key to the bank and reveal the combination to the vault, the two crooks had carried out the robbery successfully and were just returning to the house. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, by Jigo Kelmar, this scheme of yours sure paid off. We got over 200,000 in currency out of the bank vault. Sure. <laughs> I told you we'd be leaving town with a fortune. All we got to do now is get rid of Porter and Finley, and we'll hightail it to the border. Groping their way through the darkness, the two crooks made their way into the front room and lit the lamp. Well, 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 here they are. Just the way we left them. <laughs> Take off Finley's gag, Ronco. I want to hear what he has to say for himself before I put a bullet in his head. Sure thing, Kalmar. All right, sit still there. Wait a minute. There, it's off. <laughs> By Thunder Calma, you won't get away with this. Who knows? Maybe you're right. But it won't do you any good, even if the law does catch up with us. Anything else you'd like to say before I pull this trigger? You, you mean you're you're really going to kill us? Well, what do you think? Hey, wait a minute. Someone's stopping outside. Help! Help! You old goat! That's it. Keep your hand clapped over his mouth. What in blazes are we going to do? Sit tight. It's all we can do. Maybe whoever it is will just knock and go away. And what if he opens the door and walks right in? In that case, we'll greet him with a dose of lead. The two crooks waited tensely to see what would happen. A moment later, they heard the front door open and steps enter the vestibule. Who's in there? This is Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. I'll give you until I count ten to come forward with your hands up. With their attention focused on the sound of the sergeant's voice, the two crooks never realized that King was creeping up on them quietly from the back room of the house. Ray Finley had let him in the back way, and the slight noise of the back door opening was covered by the sergeant's voice. Suddenly, the great dog sprang at Kalmar. No! No! Hey, where'd this dog come from? Help! Help me, Ron! I'll get him! Oh, you don't? Oh! Oh! Up against the wall, oh. mister. Away from that gun I just shot out of your hand. Oh, all right. All right, I'm doing it. Call off this dog, Mounty. Get him away from me. So you escaped from the castle, no. eh, Kalmar? Watch him, boy, while I pick up his guns. Get him off of me! All right, down, no. King. Get up on your feet, Kalmar, and don't try any false moves. I won't. You and Ronco are under arrest in the name of the Crown. Ten minutes later, the two crooks had been handcuffed, and Eb and Zack had been untied. Uh, well, Sergeant, you sure showed up in the nick of time. Those two scoundrels are going to kill the both of us. Well, I imagine it's not the first bad situation you two faced together. No, oh, that's a mighty true statement. And which reminds me, Zack... I never did thank you for the way you pitched in and tried to save me when Kalmar first showed up. Oh, shucks, no need to thank me. I was looking out for my own skin. Ah, we sure piled into him, didn't we, Em? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say we did. It was like old times, before the Mounties came to the territory. <laughs> yeah, those were the days. Oh, dag nabbit, Zack. I reckon we've been a couple of old fools holding a grudge against each other the way we did. To tell you the truth, I've wanted to make it up with you plenty of times, but I was too doggone stubborn. Yeah, same here. Oh, by the way, about that loan. 
You may have that extension. Take all the time you want. Eb, that's mighty white of you. <laughs> uh, Mr. Porter, what about Daphne and me getting married? Sure, sure. Go ahead and get hitched if you want to. Oh, uh, I couldn't have stopped Daphne from marrying you anyhow once she made up her mind. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Say, while we're passing out tanks, I reckon we all owe a big debt of gratitude to Sergeant Preston and King. That's we right, sure man. do. We've already had our thanks, hearing what's just been said, haven't we, King? <laughs> yes, boy, this case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure, The Ghost Riders. Take a vote at your house, and I bet you'll find the whole family's choice for a delicious breakfast dish is Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Mom likes them because they're quick, ready to serve, with milk or cream and sliced bananas or other fruit. The youngsters go for wheat and rice shot from guns because they're exploded up to eight times normal size. They're extra crisp and tender, full of delicious nut-like flavor. And Dad reaches for the big red and blue package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with the picture of the smiling Quaker man because it's such a refreshing breakfast dish. And so nourishing. It gives the whole family extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. It's a deluxe family breakfast. So economical, too. Remember, the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice comes only in the large red and blue package, a fine modern package with a sealed inner lining. That lining serves to doubly protect the flavor and crispness until the moment you pour it into a bowl. For that reason, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Well, Sergeant, I see you got my message. Yes, sir, I came right over. I'm glad you did, Sergeant. A strange and vicious gang is operating in the vicinity of Selkirk. I want you to go down there as soon as possible. You say strange gang. What do you mean by that, sir? They wear white robes and white hoods every time they strike. It's a dangerous assignment, Sergeant, since they'll stop at nothing. But I want them brought in. I'll take King and leave immediately for Selkirk, sir. Come along, King. <laughs> According to the reports to headquarters, the Ghost Riders are as vicious as any gang that ever operated in the Yukon. When Sergeant Preston and King try to trail them, it may mean death for one or both. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.